And first, we want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay respect to their elders, past and present. Um, we're going to tell you guys a story about a project that uh, we've, we've sort of just almost completed. So um, there's some of the nitty gritty details that we won't get into, and there's some of the nitty gritty details that haven't happened yet. So um, we'll do our best to tell you guys an interesting story in the meantime. Um, my name is Alex Cheek, as Jack said, and this is Dean Parkin. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about ourselves probably as we go along. but. Um, uh, we both work at Second Road, which is a strategy consulting and uh, design company, with a bit of a twist, so you can probably see some of that throughout the way. But um, yeah, what we're going to talk to you about today is our work with the Kwandamuka Yulaburgi Aboriginal Corporation on North Stradbroke Island, um, which is in Queensland, just off the coast uh, of Brisbane, if you're not familiar with it. Um, so. That's sort of the context, um, and what we're going to do is just sort of talk you through our project um, up to today, pretty much. Uh, but we're going to start a couple of years ago uh, with this picture. But I'll just turn it over maybe to Dean. Um, you maybe tell a little bit about why. <coughs> you, you, you know, a bit of the context. We're just going to sort of pass it back and forth like this. This is really the first time we've talked about the project. So yeah, so bear it's with us. Not too smooth. I'd also just like to add uh, that the Quantumbuka people are also my people. Um, so this was a very personal and professional endeavour for myself. It's on my mother's side. Um, uh, I've got a connection to, to three apical ancestors that we can trace back that existed in the, in the transition from um, a purely Aboriginal society through to um, a, a settled society. Um, and I'd just like to... So Kwandamuka, Yulabarabi, Kwandamuka is the people of, of Minjiraba, which is now called North Stradbroke Island. And Yulabarabi means the people of the sand and sea, or the sand and water, um, obviously because we're, we're an island. Um, this picture here, uh, an enormously momentous event in, in our history. This was moments before the federal court sat in our <coughs> town hall on the island to hand down a determination of native title. There was uh, Mrs. Eddie Marbo was with us. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Benita, Benita Marbo, Eddie Marbo's <laughs> wife, uh, was was with us on this day. She was very emotional um, because it's a it's a it's a huge event. Obviously, her husband made it all happen for us. This day was a culmination of about sixteen years of of formal legal battle, if you like, to to get um, recognition of our uh, of our rights to our traditional estate. Um, and I say battle because because that's exactly what it was. It, it was completely adversarial, um, adversarial against between us and the state and the councils and the other stakeholders that were involved in this process, and unfortunately adversarial between ourselves because essentially what you're doing is you're, you're asking the, the the key. I won't go too much into native title because we've got a lot more to talk about. But essentially, the, the one of the key things, and it relates to the work that we did is that you have to prove continuing, unbroken connection to, to your traditional times. So for, for us, that meant 12 different family groups, each being able to, to trace their lineage all the way back. And for, for a culture that has an oral history, doesn't have things written down, that's, been, uh, that, that's had missions imposed on the island, that's gone through enormous disruption because Stradbroke Island's 35, 40 kilometres from Queen Street Mall in Brisbane. So that was the other thing um, particularly interesting about our claim is that it's the first native title claim that close to a major capital city in Australia. Because most, most people that close to a capital city have had their heritage smashed to an extent that they can't actually prove that point. Um, so, so this day was, 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 was a very, very significant day. Um, the key thing that really relates to, to our project, and I'll hand over to Alex in a minute to, to keep it going, because I can talk about this all night, um, um, is that, and I was, I was involved in the negotiations, I was representing one of the family groups, one of the 12 family groups in the negotiations leading up to this, and, and had subsequent involvement afterwards. Um, the thing about it is, because it's a battle, you're completely, you're fighting a war, essentially. You're fighting for your, your heritage, you're fighting for your connection, your family, your land. <coughs> Um, and you're fighting for your generations that have yet to come. Um, and your mindset necessarily has to be like a soldier, almost. You just, you just have, there is no co-design, there is no 
sense of, of working with. You are tooth and nail fighting the whole time. We gained something magnificent on this day. We gained, you know, it was the 4th of July 2011 when this happened, so it has, has a lot of significance for us as well. But you also lose something at that point in time. You lose the common foe that you've been fighting against. So you, 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 you step from this, we're not going to get beaten by these bastards, to shit. Now what? Um, because in this process, you don't know up until about, say, two or three weeks before this actually happened whether you're definitely going to get it or not. So you, you don't think, you know it's coming, but you don't think too much about the creative, the innovative, the, the building challenge that has to happen once once this is achieved. So, um, and some people that are involved in that challenge just step away and say this is a completely new task. So this is the kind of environment um, that we're that we're stepping into, and, and, to, and to, to, to take this forward, an organisation was created, Kayak, Wanamuka Yulabari Aboriginal Corporation, has to exist to take on board all the things that have been won um, in the native title determination. Um, and I was sitting in the first meeting, which was the day after this, and so we're sitting there, 12 people, 10 people at that point in time, um, you know, all with our own lives, none of us professional people working in the organisation, the lawyers basically hand a piece of paper across the table, double-sided, bullet-pointed and said, and that's what you're responsible for. We're not funded to help you, and good luck with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, no post office box, no bank account, nothing. Um, nothing but a fast-fading, warm glow from the day before. <laughs> um, and once you realise the size of the challenge. So that's the kind of context in which this organisation was born just over two years ago. Thanks, yeah. Um, so this is uh, a picture of Minjeraba, a picture of North Stradbroke Island. So if you're not familiar, you can see uh, sort of Morton Bay here, Brisbane, sort of here, as Dean said, 35 kilometers away, and North Stradbroke Island being this part, broken away from South Stradbroke Island about 40 years ago or something like that, the big storm. Um, it's a big giant sand island. And so there's the land itself. Uh, there's some parts of it that have been excluded. Um, but there's also this massive uh, sort of bit of water as well, um, islands, and then this part is excluded. And so, you know, when they took, when, when, when it was all handed over, essentially, um, there, there's, you know, the sense of, you know, you have all these responsibilities, but at the same time, there's still lots and lots of questions. There's lots of complexity. So, as Dean said, where they were fighting, fighting for it before, now it's sort of a matter of what do we do with it? What is it? What can we even do with it? Um, those kinds of things are not clear, at the, even at this point to some degree. Um, and then there are other parts of the surrounding area that are considered part of the Kwandamuka estate, the traditional Kwandamuka estate, so they're still fighting for those. Um, so, uh, let's keep moving through this. Um, as, yeah, you know, when everything was handed across, the board is now sort of responsible. They're not sort of, they're legally and fiscally responsible for the corporation. Um, they started to you know, realize what it's like to really be the, the leaders of a community and have this kind of collective ownership of a piece of land. And there were major fires. There were uh, members of the community staking out their plots of land that they were going to claim. Um, so that's... <laughs> and, and then there are uh, there's significant sand mining going on on the island as well. So um, I don't know if you've seen that in the news lately, but that's been sort of a big thing going on on North Stradbrook Island is is uh, the sort of tension between the the native title organization, the local government or the state government, and the the mining company. So all these kind of things are going on. Like all of a sudden, this group that was fighting are all of a sudden kind of running this little country that has you know human lives, li people living on their country, people, you know, like natural disasters and environmental and, you know, economic issues legal and, and political. legal and political, they're still fighting, so they're sort of like, wow, this is amazing complexity that they're trying to deal with, um, and they're constantly having to, like, sometimes literally put out fires, but, you know, dealing with, uh, dealing with issues as they pop up, and, and as Dean said, and you, you didn't mention this, but Dean was, you know, nominated to the board, you know, and, and so these people are just kind of Regular people on this board now responsible for 
this island and all the people on it. Um, so at this point, um, you know, there's sort of two years in, or a little less than two years in, and they just, there's, uh, I don't know exactly even why, but they, they, for some reason they had to create a strategic plan. It was for some under the constitution. Under their constitution, that eventually they had to make a strategic plan. And so they put it out to tender, and we kind of jumped at the chance. We said, this sounds exactly like the kind of thing we would like to work on. Um, like thinking back, to, I, I hadn't seen that, that table that you had jacks of you know, community systems, you know, those sort of things. You know, this is right up there at that community and systems level where it's um, an organization trying to say, what role are we going to play in this community? Um, and to your point, Dean, within a community who is, whose identity has just shifted from that kind of fighting to building. Um, so, I don't know, Dean, you want to talk a little bit about So yeah. we put our team together. Uh, you can see me and Dean. There's Justin, who unfortunately is not here, but he's another second rotor. That's Uncle Bob in the middle, one of the uh, significant elders um, on our island and also one of the, one of the board members. Um, and two of the other guys that were helping us with the, more of the financial elements of it. Part of the um, journey, our journey going on this, um, uh, you know, working, working on this project was also, uh, we brought some sponsors in as well to, to, to help us, you know, kind of fund us to do, to do the work that we were doing, uh, but also to bring their business expertise and, and, and knowledge and links to that. Uh, so I kind of found myself in a very interesting role of, because I kind of brought those guys on board as well, of being part of the family group, so it was personal, the professional connection to Second Road, and also managing the kind of stake sponsors that were that were funding the show. So it was. Uh, I'm not looking for another project like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think that's another one of the interesting things that that can happen a lot in a co-design situation is that you're potentially wearing lots of different hats. If you're a board member, you're also a community member. You're a, a voice of intent, sort of sponsoring a project, but you have sort of a house there on the island and you have all these different roles or you're, you're a, a son of a board member as well as the consultant to him. So that can happen. Um, I'll keep kind of flicking through because uh, we can really get deep into it. I want to leave time for everyone else. But you know, the way that we approached this was essentially to divide the project into two big halves. Um, because we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into, we actually uh, left sort of the first third or a quarter of the project as designing the project. Um, we knew that we would have to engage the community significantly because um, as members of the prescribed body corporate that Dean described, they all have to vote and endorse the strategy that the board comes up with. So they uh, imagine democracy sort of on steroids where not only are people com um, uh, sort of citizens, but they're owners of the land like quite literally owners have potentially you know, money and, and dividends coming to them. Those sorts of things are all uh, on the table and issues that are on people's minds. And so, and, and then on top of that, you have the, the board themselves who you know, feel a great responsibility to represent the community very strongly. So we knew that we would have to figure out what we were going to do first. So that's actually what we did for the first month or so of our three months was figure out how should we engage people, how... And what should the, this project look like? Yeah, there's also an, uh, an organisational identity uh, challenge for the, the board members as well, um, because not only do they represent their individual family lines, but now as a collective they represent the board, um, the organisation. So uh, previously, and, and very much it was very noticeable at the beginning, that they were kind of walk in and, and sit down and do, but it would almost be like 12 different voices and 12 different silos having 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 different views on it and it, through this process they they slowly and I wouldn't say you know jump straight into it but slowly started to to, to recognize that actually as as the kind of the peak native title body and, and this is the peak decision making body within that that they had also a collective identity that they had to grow into and, and form themselves through this. Yeah, I think um, this is another one of those big moments of us for co-design where we, when we came to them, we had our proposal and we had told them what we were planning to do, but I don't, we don't think that it had really sunk in with them that we really intended to engage with them as much and with the community as much as we intended to. Um, yet their previous experience with consultants had been that there would be like consultation 
essentially, like consultants tend to do. And you know, we'll do something and then we'll come and show it to you and get your feedback and then we'll go away and do a little bit more. And um, we were really turning that on its head and saying, you know, we're actually not even going to do anything until you start. Um, and so we really had to push back onto them to express their intent and articulate what they were you know, on about and what they cared about. And, and we actually did group sessions like this one as well as you know, individual interviews and conversations with all the, all the different board members. This is, again, Uncle Bob you know, talking about what he um, really cares about and telling us why he's on the board and, and, and what he hopes the strategy accomplishes um, beyond its... Uh, Sort of statutory requirements. Um, so, obligatory whiteboard photo. <laughs> whiteboards with everyone's thoughts. It was really all part of um, like getting all their ideas on the board, uh, and co like getting everyone's voice out and heard and showing them that it's all going into what we're doing. Um, you know, really starting to shift those gears from that really adversarial mode of you know, when people come in from the outside, they're fighting with us, or they're going to do it for us, or something like that, to, no, this is all your words, it's all going on the board, this is what we're going to use to, to, to help formulate your strategy. Um, it's, I mean, that is just what we do, normally speaking, but uh, I also did tell the, the, the boys when we started that, and I'm not, I'm not working with my own mob, um, they do like seeing their words represented, they do like seeing things um, in pictures, as much as possible, um, and you know, I kind of put the filter on about how my mum, as one of the board members, likes to likes to see stuff. So yeah, that this, even though 